We're usually living on this channel for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. I had a question on a video the other day on a Teaching Tech Tuesday video asking me to discuss private custody and hardware wallet management overall security actions with crypto. Bruno, thank you for the question. Let's go over this. I will give everyone some more recommended uh, viewing and reading. But the most obvious thing is, look, if you want to be your own bank, you want to be smart about it. You don't want to flaunt things. You don't want to <laughs> be, be incredibly obvious, right? You don't want to hang your ledger around your neck when you're going out. This was a uh, collab ledger and uh, a rapper. His name is Gunna. The Met Gala Snoop also seen wearing a ledger. So the first line of defense is uh, don't be silly about it. And you don't want to get too cute with your storage either. You don't want to be like this where you end up accidentally being unable to access these sort of things. This was an extremely old story about an individual in the UK where he was throwing away some hard drives and uh, didn't realize he threw, threw away the wrong one with 8,000 Bitcoin on it. And Jameson Law talks about this a lot. He is definitely the best resource for this. I'll put all the links that I'm discussing in the video in the description of this video, but he's got the best repository for all of this information. And as he says here, if you're not holding your own private keys, you're not, you don't own Bitcoin. The same thing with anything else, but specifically Bitcoin. And that's another conversation to have. Are you a Bitcoiner specifically, or are you a multi-coiner? You will have different needs. Do you want access on your, your mobile phone? Do you want access on a browser wallet? We're talking MetaMask or other stuff, right? Do you use Lightning frequently? If you use Lightning, you probably want a mobile wallet. I've used most of these mobile wallets with success. Uh, then we can have this conversation of custodial versus non-custodial Lightning wallets. And I know it's maybe uncouth to say it's okay to use a custodial Lightning wallet, but with Lightning, I'm not using a large amount of dollar value. I'm using probably less than $500 on a Lightning wallet most of the time. We're talking about very small transactions for the most part, for me personally. Okay, so look, if you want to use Wallet of Satoshi, I'm not going to strike you down from on high by saying you should be using a non-custodial wallet. Okay. Is it perfect? No, but is it a solution that's viable? Yes. <laughs> okay. Like he says, like Jameson says here, these tend to have a weaker security in return for increased convenience. I get it. Everybody needs to have a hardware wallet and you should, and you should have a crypto steal and you should have a safe and you should put it away and forget about it. Okay. I get that. You should not be connecting this to the internet frequently. It should not be on your mobile phone. Do you keep your life savings on your phone? No. Do you keep your life savings on a browser wallet? No. Some people do. People lose CryptoPunks. People lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just a couple of weeks ago, Mark Cuban locked in to his MetaMask wallet and clicked the wrong link, gave the wrong permission or something, and you know lost six figures. Okay. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to keep a majority of non-trading coins on a hardware wallet, on a dedicated hardware device that is not connected to the internet. That's step one. From there, we can talk about mobile wallets and browser wallets and exchanges. Totally fine, okay? That's part of the game. We're trading. I get it. That's why we're here. But what you don't want to do is, again, stick your entire net worth on a mobile phone or a browser wallet. Please, for the love of God, okay? Don't be a statistic. Um, Jameson has tons of videos talking about all sorts of fun stuff, including ways people lose their Bitcoin, which is incredibly important to realize where are the weaknesses, where are the flaws, including hardware wallets, which if they are accessed can be compromised. Okay. That is a known issue. It's not like we don't know this is a problem. Uh, for instance, hardware wallets have a passcode or a pin code. Okay. I believe all of them can be cracked if you have physical access to the device. So if you see headlines like so-and-so lost his Bitcoin on a hardware wallet or so-and-so had his Bitcoin stolen. Uh, it wasn't through the network, okay? It was most likely through one of these other reasons, including physical access to a hardware wallet or the worst of all, keeping your private keys on cloud storage, okay? Or keeping passwords in LastPass or some other password manager. Again, you want air-gapped hardware not connected to the internet, okay? Infrequent use, that sort of thing. Jameson has also put together a list over the years of 
physical attacks on people, not to scare you, but uh, again, just to help learn what not to do, what to prevent yourself from, and how to keep yourself safe while using <laughs> Bitcoin. Andreas is another great resource for all sorts of questions you have about hardware wallets and software wallets and paper wallets and lightning. Definitely one of the OGs as far as knowledge and trustworthiness in the space. So check him out if you have questions. And then another one that I watch pretty frequently is uh, Bitcoin University, Matt Cratter. He talks about topical uh, Bitcoin Maxi stuff, but he's also got a ton of videos on hardware wallets, any specific questions. And if there's ever any topical news items about wallets, he will discuss that on his channel. All right, so let's talk about specific hardware wallets real quick. CoinKite is probably the best. I don't have any experience with this particular wallet, but if you are a Bitcoin only user, probably one of the best avenues for you. And inevitably in the comments, you will hear people say, don't use this one, don't use this one, but for this reason, okay. So you gotta do a little bit of research. You gotta check them out for yourself. There's no perfect solution for everybody. Uh, Trezor, I probably have the most familiarity with, but they've been around the longest. It's always best to buy these through the website themselves. That's another issue. Again, depending on your country, I saw a headline the other day where a country wouldn't, I think it was Ethiopia, a country wouldn't let someone import a hardware wallet into the country. So depending on where you're at in the world, this could be an issue for you. But when you order this stuff, you want to make sure it's from a reputable seller, if not the business itself. You want to make sure the security seal is intact, all sorts of stuff, because there have been stories where someone receives a hardware wallet and it's compromised and they don't know it's compromised and they lose everything, right? Okay. Again, not nightmare fuel, but just heads up on weaknesses in the security stack here. Trezor does support multiple coins, stable coins, all sorts of stuff. If uh, you are a multi-coiner, certain wallets won't let you stake or will have native staking on the wallet. That's another thing to research if that interests you. But other than that, between uh, CoinKite, Trezor, uh, the Blockstream wallet, the Jade, those are probably your best options on the Bitcoin side of things for a hardware wallet. You'll also want to obtain some sort of metal device that will store your keys. And how this works is you spell out the private key in this uh, metal container using letters. And that way it can't be destroyed. You know, ink over time can fade, can get smeared, it can get wet, it can burn, right? It can, the paper itself can get deteriorated. Whereas on the uh, crypto steel, your seed phrase ideally is uh, forever in metal, okay? Another added layer of security when you're dealing with uh, private keys in your wallet. Now, most people are familiar with the ledger because uh, they're pretty much everywhere. They have ad campaigns talking about the ledger. I've used ledger over the years. I've had multiple ledgers, haven't had any problems, but the real issue with Ledger is they introduce this uh, recovery service, which they will tell you is opt-in, but unfortunately, based on the hardware updates, we don't know what we don't know yet about how opt-in it truly is. For instance, if this is enabled on a device, but your account doesn't have Ledger Recover, can law enforcement go to Ledger and ask for confiscation, for example, right? That's been the concern. I don't think we've seen that confirmed yet. They backpedaled on releasing it, and then they quietly released it a couple weeks back. It was a PR disaster for them. Um, this is the service. Now, for many people, this is a useful service. It's 10 euro a month or whatever, and they will store your seed, your, your seed phrase, your keys, whatever, right? But again, the problems here should be obvious. Not your keys, not your coins. This is uh, sharded keys. So keys are between three different locations, ideally three places that are under different government rule that don't have extradition, blah, 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 right? It just becomes a mess from a security perspective. I can understand why people would use something like this. You'll read testimonials saying how great this is from people, right? <laughs> but it has its flaws. It has big, big, major flaws, okay? As long as you know what you're getting into, that's fine. But this is not something I would touch or opt into or deal with or want to think about. Uh, Jameson also has a company called Casa. If you are probably of the higher net worth or the higher Bitcoin storage security, multi-sig concerns. I don't particularly like that they have a uh, mobile software wallet or whatever this is. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher what, what this exactly is, but this isn't an advertisement for Casa. I'm just saying if you want additional security, it can be 
found. You know, if you've got multiple billions in, in Bitcoin, maybe like the Winklevi twins do, they've got keys split up across physical banks in safety deposit boxes, probably, right? Across the country, probably across the world. So you can always be more and more secure. There's no question about it. But step one is to obtain a hardware wallet. They are anywhere between 50 and $100 USD and certainly worth every penny. These are some software wallets that uh, Jameson has reviewed. I'm not going to recommend any of these. All of them have their problems. Mixers have their problems. Everything's got issues. Okay, you're going to find it highly, highly tribal if you look into this stuff a little bit. I want to say Electrum's probably the best as far as the software wallet is concerned, but get a hardware wallet, be smart about it, and don't lose everything you have. Um, last, I'll just mention DeFi and DeFi hacks. DeFi is a completely different animal because to me, the attack surface is infinite. The risk is innumerable and unknowable. Anytime you're approving a permission on anywhere or going through any bridge, right? You're just adding layers and layers and layers of potential issues. For me personally, I don't interface with DeFi a lot. I have a little bit of coin in DeFi, in the DeFi ecosystem on layer twos. If that somehow evaporates for whatever reason, I'll be okay. But the point is here, yeah, it's it's fun to play around and do all that stuff. But the risk is extremely high, okay? There are people who've done it for years, have had no issues, no problems. You want to be smart about it. And it's just fun to, to read, you know, some of these that don't always make the news as far as what's going on. Whether it's a protocol issue or a rug pull or permissions or something else, right? There are all sorts of very interesting ways DeFi has its problems. Uh, then there's also this, this article from August 2020 talking about Ethereum being a dark forest. And uh, it is a horror story. It is a super interesting vantage point and viewpoint discussing, you know, what DeFi can try to take away from you on a, in, in a sense that you are prey and everyone else is a predator, okay? So <laughs> you just have to be super careful. So get educated. Watch a few more videos. Jameson, Andreas, Matt Crowder, whoever. You know, watch somebody you trust. Grab one of the hardware wallets before they inevitably have some sort of supply issues during a bull run, okay? Get yourself sorted off the exchanges, not your keys, not your coins. And something else I'll mention that I think is common sense, I hope is common sense, when you're transferring coins from address to address, you always want to double and triple check, you know, the first four, last four, or first 10, last 10 characters of the address. I'm paranoid about that. So, uh, you know, I'm always double and quadruple checking. One last thing I'll say about Ledger. They do have this, I don't even know what it's called. They do have a hardware product coming. Here it is. Ledger Stacks. Uh, it looks cool, but again, I don't want anything connected to my phone. I don't want Bluetooth personally, right? And if you're using something like this, you just have to be really careful that it's not your entire life savings on a uh, hardware, always online, Bluetooth enabled device, okay? Paired with something, you know, just have some common sense. Looks cool. It's going to be awesome. I get it. But it has issues. Every one of these storage solutions will have issues. That's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.